There are certain parts of Africa in which you cannot live at all. So it is for you to come together and give us a United States of Africa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are not going to be a race without a country. God never intended it, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. We are men, human beings, capable of the same acts as any other race, possessing under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. This decade is the decade of African independence. Forward then to independence, to independence now. Tomorrow, the United States of Africa. When it comes to us, they say, no, you must have bought us. Why? The division of Africa is what makes them thrive. They thrive on the division of the African continent. Can you imagine the minerals of DRC combined with the minerals of South Africa and with a new currency based on the minerals? <clears throat> what we can do to the dollar if we become a United States of Africa with our minerals alone, we can collapse the dollar. We can collapse the strong pound that is based on gold, yet they don't have a gold mine. <clears throat> I'm calling on these four revolutionary leaders and generals to give us a United States of Africa. Will y'all do that? Will you four countries be the first four countries in the United States of Africa? Can we finally give Africa a United States of Africa? Welcome back to the Mac Jetson channel. Today we're diving into a topic that's both historical and forward-looking, the need for a United States of Africa. We'll start by examining the progressive movements in Guinea, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, which have been at the forefront of overthrowing neocolonialism. Peace and black power. Welcome to the Mac Jetson channel. I am your humble host, Mac. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the show. These countries, Guinea, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, have shown tremendous resilience and unity in their struggles against neocolonialism. Burkina Faso's president, Ibrahim Traore's powerful quote, We are going to fight, but Africa needs to be able to unite. The more united we are, the more effective we are. The Malians come to us, it really is the same army. We train together, we fight together, perfectly encapsulates the essence of Pan-Africanism. The Malians and Burkinabes coming together to train and fight as one army demonstrates the potential strength that lies within a united Africa. Let's shift our focus to recent events. Nigerian senators reject Tinubu's request for troops deployment in Niger. However, Nigerian senators have rejected this request, opting for diplomatic negotiations instead. The rejection of military intervention by Nigerian senators highlights the importance of unity and solidarity among African nations. While it's understandable that Nigeria is grappling with internal challenges like Boko Haram and banditry, it's crucial to stand in solidarity with Niger. Chad will also not send troops to neighboring Niger, the country's defense minister Dawood Yahya Ibrahim has said. The decision of Chad not to intervene is disappointing from a Pan-African standpoint. It's a reminder that true unity should extend beyond borders. As we delve deeper into the dynamics surrounding the crisis in Niger, a recent statement from ECOWAS Commissioner Abdel Fattah Musa has caught our attention. He stated, we are ready to go any time the order is given. The D-Day is also decided, which we are not going to disclose. This is the final meeting before deployment. While this might sound like a commitment to action, it's disappointing from a pan-African perspective when we consider the broader context. ECOWAS, as a regional organization under the influence of the United States and France, holds the potential to be a powerful force for change in Africa. However, instances like this, where military intervention is on the horizon, raise questions about the true intentions and impacts of such actions. Thomas Sankara's quote, Each time an African country buys a gun, it is against an African. It is not against a European. It is not against an Asian country. It is against an African, echoes the sentiment of unity against internal strife. Comparing Sankara's words to the situation at hand, it's disheartening to see regional organizations potentially becoming pawns in perpetuating neo-colonialism and further internal conflicts. While the goal might be to restore constitutional order, 
it's essential to consider the long-term effects and whether these interventions genuinely serve the interests of the African people. Pan-Africanism calls for unity, solidarity and a shared commitment to uplift the continent. Instead of resorting to military interventions, there should be a focus on diplomacy, mediation and collaboration to address internal crises. This approach aligns more closely with the ideals of Thomas Sankara, who sought to break free from the cycle of internal violence. It's our responsibility as advocates of Pan-Africanism to question these actions, demand transparency and seek peaceful solutions that align with the vision of a united and prosperous Africa. Let's work towards fostering understanding, open dialogue and a commitment to lasting change that benefits all Africans. As we continue our exploration, it becomes evident that the vision of a United States of Africa is not just a hopeful aspiration, but a necessity. It's unfortunate that throughout history, the powers that be have thrived on exploiting division within Africa. The potential of a united Africa threatens their control, making it imperative for us to recognize the strength that unity holds. The lack of currency interoperability among African nations has been a major setback. Imagine the transformative power of a single African currency backed by the vast and rich natural resources of the continent. Such a currency could rival even the almighty US dollar, asserting Africa's economic sovereignty on a global scale. The United States of Africa isn't just about economic power, but about stopping the exploitation of African resources. With the right leadership and the establishment of a comprehensive pan-African constitution, Africa can finally wield its resources for the benefit of its people rather than being drained by external interests. Imagine an Africa where fundamental human rights are the cornerstone of society. Adequate housing, education and healthcare are not luxuries, but inherent rights accessible to all. A continent where education and healthcare are free, where the concept of interest-free loans from banks is not a distant dream, but a reality. This vision aligns with the pan-African ideals of unity, shared prosperity and justice. The United States of Africa has the potential to transform the continent into a true paradise. By uniting under a common banner, Africa can harness its collective strength to build a future that empowers its people, safeguards its resources, and stands tall on the world stage. It's a dream that's within reach, and it's up to us to work towards making it a reality. As we wrap up today's discussion, let's reflect on a quote from Malcolm X. There can be no black-white unity until there's first some black unity. This sentiment perfectly captures the essence of the need for a United States of Africa. It's only by standing united within ourselves that we can truly stand strong in the world. Let's continue to explore and promote the ideals of Pan-Africanism and unity for a brighter future for Africa and all its people. Thank you for joining us today as we explored the pressing need for a United States of Africa and the importance of unity among African nations. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions. Until next time, stay informed and stay empowered.